find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sings. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug when I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pot. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, where you talk independent pro wrestling. Uh, myself, a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area with Sorgatron Media, PittsburghWrestling.com, uh, working with the guys at the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and a little bit here and there all around, uh, finding Zach Gowan documentaries, etc., etc., etc. That's how I've dipped my toe in this business, as it were. Uh, the other guy on the other end is uh, Eamon, Eamon Payton, at Eamon to please on the Twitter and down in San Antonio, Texas. A great the great uh, commentator for uh, Inspire Pro down there. Uh, how you doing, Eamon? I'm doing really good. Uh, came off of a, a really good show this past weekend for Inspire Pro Wrestling that we may be getting into later in the show. Nice. Uh, got a guest from my neck of the woods, so it's it's going to be a fun show, I think. I'm, I'm excited for uh, for this one. Nice. Can't wait. First, a little bit of business. First, big thanks to Basic Sickness for the intro and outro. Uh, for this and the other Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, you can check him out for free music and videos at basicsickness.com. And, of course, you can check out this and uh, all the shows that we do at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including the Mayhem Minute, little bits I've been doing of news every day, oh, well, four days a week-ish. Um, the wrap-ups for Raw, Total Divas even at this point, and, of course, uh, NXT SmackDown with the Midweek War. Lucha Underground, can't forget Lucha Underground, of course. And you can also drop us a line uh, with your thoughts about indie wrestling and anything else at 412-206-WMS0 or that email address at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Find us on Twitter at Mayhem Show and uh, find Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, the Facebook group. There's a lot of conversation happening. And of course, Google Plus. And please subscribe to us. All the links over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com on iTunes, YouTube, and all kinds of other places. Uh, and of course, you can join us here on Tuesdays at uh, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com at uh, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central for Eamon and, her, and his friends down there. Uh, <laughs> so who do we have uh, on with us? My voice is getting weird this late at night. Uh, <laughs> who do we have on with us this week, Eamon? We, we have a guest on this week that uh, I'm very excited to have on. I uh, to uh, get her on the Mayhem show for a little while. Uh, a bit of a vet, you could say, in the Texas independent wrestling scene. Uh, she's done a lot of stuff also uh, all throughout the United States, even uh, a couple tours in Japan that we will uh, definitely be getting into. Uh, and and she's definitely one to uh, always keep an eye on. Uh, the one and only Jessica James. Jessica, thank you for joining us this evening. Oh no problem. Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thank. Uh, well, again, thank you for coming on. And I guess sort of a uh, to start it off, sort of an icebreaker question that we have for uh, all of our guests uh, is: uh, uh, What was your first memory of professional wrestling? Now, if I know you, uh, you actually have a bit of an interesting story uh, to cover this since from. What I've heard of you, like you, you weren't really necessarily a wrestling fan growing up, if, if I'm right. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. I didn't realize um, how public knowledge that was. Um, for many years, I've basically been trying to keep it on the down low, a secret, but here we are now talking about it. So <laughs> it's good for me to know that that information is out there. So but it's definitely in the future, I will be trying to lie and cover it up. Thank you. <laughs> no, but but um, I, think it's, I think it's interesting because we get a lot of people on that, that sort of, you know, talk about them being kids watching it but but uh, but it's cool to see that you know that's not always the case right and um in my experience it has definitely been um it's definitely been an adventure to take it from that direction um as far as like exactly what you're saying a lot of people you know they fall in love with wrestling when they're children and that's when um you know, the sky is the limit when you're a child. You believe what you see and you're passionate about it and you know you haven't learned all these things yet so um, that's, it's, I can see how it's easy to fall in love with wrestling when you're a kid. It's larger than life. Um, it's all these huge, huge things. And obviously anyone listening to this and all of us, myself included, are huge fans of wrestling. So we all understand how easy it is to fall in love with it. But in my case, like you said, uh, not the norm. My family was, um, both my parents were in the Marine Corps and I grew up with all boys in the family. My dad had us in uh, martial arts since like we could walk. So we were, my brothers and I were those kids in school that were like black belts and breaking boards and all that kind of stuff. And at the time, um, you know, we moved around quite frequently because we're a military family and 
we were going to Chuck Norris's dojo in Arizona. And at the time, nice. my dad actually looked kind of a lot like Chuck Norris, but he was mistaken for him all the time. And we were always <laughs> having to calm insane fans down. No, no, this is not Chuck Norris. Or at least that's what my dad was saying. Of course, we were saying like, well, come on, dad. You know, why are you trying to tell people you're not Chuck Norris when clearly you are? Um <laughs> Because we're obnoxious children or whatever. So that's that was kind of our um, background and upbringing. And all through high school, um, I was in theater. I was actually the first thespian at my school. And one time I was uh, invited to come to this wrestling show. And I was like, wrestling? You know, and the only little bit I'd seen on TV was I knew who Hulk Hogan was. But mm-hmm. surely everyone in America at the time knew who Hulk Hogan was. Um and I wasn't really interested at all in seeing it because my family grew up on Sylvester Stallone and, you know, Bruce Lee and stuff like that. That's what we were watching. Mm-hmm. So I come to this wrestling show and I see um, that there's a million fans and they're the most insane hardcore fans of any sporting event I've ever seen. First of all, it was the first thing I noticed. And then I noticed, um, secondly, after that, that everybody was drinking. And I was like, okay, well, that's that's different. I didn't, you know, everybody was drinking. Like there was 12 year olds in the audience that were drinking beer. (laughs) I thought like, okay, that's pretty cool or whatever. Um, and then like the guy comes out and everybody is cheering and like, this is a rock star. Everybody loves this guy, obviously. And then this other guy comes out and everybody's booing and screaming, but I was more caught off guard. They were screaming at him and spitting at him and cussing at him and like throwing stuff at him. And he was also yelling and screaming at them back. And I was like, well, so in the audience, as a fan, you're just allowed to say whatever you want. You're just allowed <laughs> to do whatever you want. And I was like, this is awesome. Um, and then I, I, you know, I saw the uh, the action going on in the ring. And as a, uh, you know, a martial art student mm-hmm. and uh, things of that nature, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I, I had no idea what wrestling was about. And I immediately felt... Uh, you know, like humbled by what it was I thought wrestling was about, you know, seeing it live is a completely different experience. It's completely uh, audience interactive. Um, and so later that month, I was at that same wrestling ring, training in the ring to become a wrestler. And I had, of course, no idea what I was getting myself into, but um, that's how I fell in love with wrestling. And sometimes I'll run across people who feel like, well, you know, you, you haven't lived your whole life with this love. And then my response to that is, is like, right, I was like 19. I was a grown up and living on my own when I fell in love with wrestling. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's harder to do. Um, so after but, we but fell also, in love with, like I was a kid. But, 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 but from also from the way you make it sound, like it, it seems like that one at, that one medium, I guess you could say, that kind of combined the things that you had loved for a long time, you know, the martial arts stuff, as well as like you mentioned, like the theater based sort of stuff, like the theatrics of it. So, well, so yeah, in, I thought- in essentially... I thought what it was is like when I saw it, my first in my first like idea of it was like, oh, this is a live action comic book. These are mm-hmm. comic book heroes. They're um, larger than life personalities. There's all that spandex. Everybody is gorgeous for no reason. Like <laughs> it, that's exactly what it was. They're doing things out there that are humanly impossible. This is a live action comic book, and I'm a huge nerd. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone who loves wrestling is, but I don't mean it in a bad way, obviously. Oh no. Um. So, like, that's what I thought it was. And actually, um, you know, how the whole story connects is uh, the person who invited me to come to this wrestling show is a part of a children's charity that I still do where um, there's this there's this group that's called KIT24, K-I-T-2, the letter, the number two, four, KIT24, um, where we dress up like superheroes and we visit, like, children's hospitals and we do... Um, safety fairs and we work with the Dallas police department and we do the state fair every year. And the man who organizes children's charity has over 30 full on handmade costumes from all the comic books. Um, and we go and we visit children and like, you know, we try and build them up and all and, and things of that nature. And wouldn't you know that in a children's charity where we dress up like superheroes, I met a wrestling fan and that's how I got into wrestling. Definitely. And, and you mentioned that you started training at the, uh, the same place that you first attended. And if I'm not mistaken, I was a PCW right out of Dallas. Yes. PCW in Arlington. Um, it, it ran for a really long time. They had like a TV deal down there, mm-hmm. I guess before, before I knew about it. So I, I'm not really sure about that information because <laughs> before well, I knew anything. Well, we had, um, a, we actually had a James Johnson on not too long ago and he sort of talked about his, his uh, time at PCW as well. And, and, and sort of the environment. Uh, going into what was it like kind of training to actually become a wrestler and, and, and 
was it sort of the actual training process? Was it different than what you expected going in? Um, well, uh, some, I'm, I'm the type of personality or the type of person who uh, will see something exciting and enthusiastically rush right into it without knowing anything at all. Um, so I was like, yay, wrestling. And I showed up for the first day. And it, until we started doing stuff, I was like, oh, I hadn't thought about what this might be like. So I didn't have an idea of what it was going to be like or even considered it until I got there because I was too excited to start doing it. Mm -hmm. Um but it seemed as though to me, um, there were a few obvious things that came up right away as far as I'm concerned. One being that I'm unusually small, even for a girl, <laughs> to be a wrestler. Um, so that was evident right away to everyone, even to a degree where people were worried about me in training. Like, well, you're, you know, the size of a child. Maybe this will damage you internally or permanently or in some bad way that none of us want to deal with. You look like you're 12, that kind of thing. Right. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, the other part to that was once we got into things, it was like, I seemed to be picking it up pretty quickly. And there were some aspects of wrestling that I, uh, seemed to be a natural at, but I, of course I chalked that up to the martial art training and being raised by wolves basically. So <laughs> I think that kind of gave me an edge a little bit. And basically my, uh, enthusiasm and excitement, uh, for me personally, if it's like hard work, then Frankly, I'm not really excited about it. <laughs> right. And wrestling absolutely is hard work. And the training was um, probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in hindsight. But I was so excited about it that it was enough to um, keep me going every day. I went to practice. Uh, when I initially started, um, it was Lance Hoyt was the head trainer uh, for PCW in Arlington. But uh, BJ Turner and Wally Darkman, they were the two that were in the ring with me the most. Um, that kind of like was my guinea pig. and Sent me the ins and the outs, and um, and then after that, I uh, I had a tryout for a uh, Booker T school in mm -hmm. Houston, and at the time I barely, you know, I was super, you know, green as a dollar bill, maybe six months in, maybe, and um, I was encouraged to go to the tryout, and I ended up going, and Booker at the time had no female students, and he uh, he accepted me as his first and only female student, and invited me to come live in Houston, and he was. Him and Charmel were both super nice about it. They, you know, come live with us if you need to, you know, come be a part of the school, learn how to wrestle. Uh, Booker's exact words after he saw my match were, um, <clears throat> just so you know, this is going to be a terrible impression of Booker T. I hope that he never hears this. <clears throat> <clears throat> but it was something like, uh, yeah, uh, you're a little wild, but I think I could work with this. <laughs> something, I love it. something like that. Um, we we're supposed to have a four minute match which is not long as uh, anyone in wrestling knows it's not long mm -hmm. uh, four minute match. And our match ended after two minutes and Booker looked up and he said, well, that was only two minutes. And I panicked, of course, being super green and not having an idea what to do. So I just picked my opponent up and socked him once really good in the face. And I continued the match and basically that got over and he was like, okay, we'll take you. We can do something with this. Awesome. And man. Then I moved and then I moved ahead. to Houston and I moved to Houston and started training there. And that's when I got my, uh, you know, real intensive background as far as, uh, wrestling and all the millions of different things to learn about wrestling where I really picked all that up and refined anything that I had learned there with Booker. Definitely. And, and sort of, I, I would think that from that point on, you were sort of like getting on the road a bit more and, and, and doing a bit more travels and stuff like that. Uh, from from your years, sort of after that, uh, how did you know, based off of your career and stuff? I I, I think I started first because I first started going to independent shows. I think around like 2012 or so. Um, but uh, from your time, you know, in the wrestling business, what was it like, sort of being on the road and traveling and and wrestling all these different places? Uh, how did you sort of take to the the lifestyle of being a professional wrestler? Um, well, initially for me, what was difficult was. Um, you know, like there's, uh, let's take high school as an example, because <laughs> we've all been to high school. Yes. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, you have your jocks and you have your brains and you have your various other things. And then you have that like weirdo over there in the corner that doesn't quite fit into any of those groups, but a little bit not to them. That was kind of me. So like in wrestling, the thing that was hardest for me to pick up on was, um, not something that was specific to wrestling. It was uh, things that are true as difficulties for me in life in general, which is I'm, I'm a very like kind person. I'm just, you know, nice and I have good manners and I'm um, sympathetic very, very easily. I'm, I'm a pushover, you know, 
uh, if I hear a sob story, then I'm all about it. I want to help, you know, things like that. So mm-hmm. in wrestling, you have like wolf type characters who will take advantage of those type of characters. So that took me a little while to figure out, um, like the naive girl who will say this all the time. What? I don't get it. That was me. <laughs> um, I'll admit it just all the time. And in wrestling, it's like a, it's like a whole universe and a whole culture all into itself. There's a language, there's a protocol. Um, it's a complete culture. Like I was Jane Goodall and I was observing a whole new environment and society and culture and just trying to like figure out the lingo and figure all these things out. Um, and a lot of the things that people say are hard, difficult about wrestling or that you hear people talk about is like the travel lifestyle is very difficult and it's, mm-hmm. it's exhausting, especially if you have like a regular day job. And then the weekend rolls around, you're always having to be in the gym and you're always having to diet and you have to like drive for hours and hours. By the time you get there, you're exhausted and then you have to wrestle and then you've got your butt kicked. I mean, whether you win or lose at some point during that match, you were getting your butt kicked. I mean, that's yeah. just the way that it is. So, and then you have to drive all the way back in the middle of the night and go to work the next morning and all this stuff. So for me, that part of it was actually um, the fun, adventurous part for me. I grew up in a military family, so I moved all over the place. I lived in 13 different states before I ever got into wrestling. Um, so that part to me was um, natural. Like, I'm a gypsy, um, actually. So throwing my crap into the car and driving for hours and then going somewhere was kind of easy for me to be totally honest. And, um, I don't know that anyone who knows me knows, but I'm kind of an eater. I love to pick out. I love to eat. Um, I love to go out of town and pick a local place that is not 10 minutes from my house and eat and pig out there and try their like specialty drinks and try their famous dessert and take a lot of pictures of it and post it all over my Instagram. I'm one of those people. I was going to so, say, if anyone's followed you on social media, they, they, they would definitely attest to that. I, I, I know a lot of people comment on like how the fact that you can, you know, eat so much and still like look the way that you are is astonishing to, to me it's, and, uh, and many others. It's excitement. If you're excited about what you're eating, you'll just burn right through that. Just be super excited about it. That's what I'm doing anyways. I'm like genuinely excited to be eating this meal and be taking pictures of it. And so it's like I'm burning as I'm eating. It's super easy. (laughs) Um, So like also maybe genetics, you know, I don't want to like say that that's not what it is. I don't want to piss anyone off who's like struggling with their diet right now. I do, I do diet. I just, um, I try and try and do it the week, like, Oh, the week, the month, whatever. So now I'm saying things I want to be saying anyways. Mm-hmm. So I like I so I like to eat and I love to go out of town. So for me, um, traveling all over the place to wrestle was um, a huge, gigantic perk. Like for me, it's not the destination; it's the journey. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what country I'm going to, or it doesn't matter which location I'm going to, because when I get there, there's going to be a whole ad- adventure waiting for me that I have not experienced. And um, to me, that's super exciting: making the memories, taking the pictures, having all these stories. Um, so that later when I'm old and decrepit and I can't walk anymore because I spent my youth wrestling, um, I'm going to say, that's true. I can't walk anymore, but, and then there's going to be all this stuff I'm going to have. And um, it's just super exciting. There's all kinds of things that I would not have been able to do had wrestling not opened that door for me. So I will stay in wrestling as long as the journey is still uh, fascinating and fantastic for me. And so far it's been nothing but that. Like. Um, I love getting to travel and meet new people and make new memories and have all kinds of crazy stories and go on adventures. To me, that's what it is. It's never a dull moment. That kind of thing. Definitely. No, totally. Um, uh, And to talk about some of the more recent travels, uh, um, and and you in general, from from the time I first got to see you wrestle to now, you definitely made a a, a big transformation in uh, your character and your presentation. I think one of the things that really – Aided to that was uh, you, you've done a couple tours of Japan now uh, under your belt. Uh, uh, what's that been like, sort of traveling to to Japan and and, and training in Japan and and sort of learning in their kind of style of wrestling? How, and how does it differ from America? I guess is the best way to put it. Um, well, um, since the first time I the first tour I went on, I got back. I got um, there was a lot of questions from other you know workers asking mm-hmm. like. Um, kind of the first kind of set of questions is kind of aimed at how is it that you got over there? That seems to be kind of a mystery or at least I think that it is, but I'm not really sure. Let me just, I should have prefaced this entire interview with just so everyone knows 
although I'm a wrestler and have been doing it for a long time, I have been places, I don't really know that much about wrestling. I don't know how that translates, but it's a reality. Um, like, I don't know what other people know. I only know what I know. Mm-hmm. And the only things I know are only things I've learned through my own experience and not from from anyone else. So I really don't know. But for me, uh, it seems like um, there was a company in Japan, an all-women's all company that was looking for American girls. And then it became like a hunt. Which girl can we invite to Japan that is going to meet a list of requirements? And those requirements, at least, that were made aware to me were things like, um, are they in shape enough or athletic enough to be able to handle the super intense physical training? Because that's that's definitely a reality. Like, I, I know we hear different things about the training in Japan, but at least the JoJo that I lived at and worked at, we trained twice a day, every day. Uh, with no days off and um, all kinds of like hard, uh, intense training. There was no day I was over there where I wasn't sore and exhausted. Um, They were also looking for someone who was experienced enough to be able to handle the uh, obvious language barrier. Um, A lot of people in Japan learn English in school, but not necessarily speaking it. They learn it like reading, writing, um, a little bit of things like, uh, like everyone in Japan is super nice. Like if you, I'm not saying this ever happened. I'm just saying hypothetically, if you were just to get wasted one night in Japan and crash on the grass in the middle of the street, uh, that would be fine. Um, people would leave you alone. Somebody might cover you up even, but nobody's going to rob you because everybody's really nice in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if you're getting lost, you're trying to find your way on the train and you ask someone, They might speak English, but as far as wrestling goes, there's a huge barrier there, and the styles are completely different. So they needed someone who could handle the training, who had enough experience to handle the language barrier, and was professional enough to not embarrass, basically, America. Not (laughs) their state or their city or their federation that they work for, but the whole country. Um, It's hard to get invited over there. It's even harder to get invited back because now you've been over there long enough for them to get to know you and realize how awful you are and they don't want you back. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) That kind of thing. (laughs) So um, they they asked me if I wanted to do it. And of course, I was like, yes, absolutely. I want to do that. Um, A free trip to Japan so that I can eat my face off and try all these things and go to all these places and take all these pictures. And let's not forget the reason I'm here to do all this fantastic, amazing wrestling. And I didn't know it at the time until I got there. But um, the dojo I uh, lived at and trained with is a very old school women's dojo. So everyone with that company has been wrestling 15 plus years. And most of them are huge legends in Japan. Um, if, if I believe uh, Ki- uh, Kyoko Inoue was one of the, the main focuses in that, in that organization. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> She is the president and champion of the company, Kyoko, um, and uh, Jaguar Yokota. She's a huge, huge legend of Japan. Um, she's like a celebrity there. Um, ref- famous wrestling legends in Japan are celebrities. They're on like local commercial, like commercials um, over the whole country. They're in movies. They do game shows. Mm-hmm. Um, they do all these things. And, and the company that I work for, Diana, um, are comprised only of these women, these older women who... I'm I'm looking at Jaguar Ikoda and I'm thinking like, wow, she's got to be like 50. And it turns out she's like 180, I guess. <laughs> um, but she's still out there running the ropes and kicking people in the face like it's nobody's business and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, you guys are just, this is what you're doing your whole lives, your whole lives until you literally can't walk anymore. Um, so it's pretty impressive. So um the training was super difficult and it was intense and it was constant. And like I said, I was exhausted the whole time I was there mm-hmm. um, and sore. But, but when I came home and I know this is going to be hard to believe because I'm five feet tall and 110 pounds. But when I came home, <laughs> I was like 120 pounds and that extra 10 pounds was all muscle. Nice. Very I had nice. tiny muscles on, tiny, on top of my tiny muscles and Japan did all that for me. <laughs> That's all, but it seems it seems as if you had you know gotten a great deal out of your time uh, over in Japan and and especially with your character nowadays I think it's taken sort of a more uh, serious side not that you were necessarily a comedy character before but that you were a bit more uh, eccentric and and now I think you've gotten the chance to show a bit more of a serious uh, uh, 
by any means business sort of side. Yeah, it's um, it's just a reality of me that like um, if I'm excited about something, then uh, I'm capable of putting putting out a lot of effort. Um, and to me, it doesn't feel like any at all because. I mean, and this is like a, a secret that people don't know, I guess, or whatever. So I guess I'm like sharing things here or whatever. But I'm really lazy in, in my own nature. I'm totally lazy. If what I'm doing is not exciting for me, then I have no interest in doing it. And I just don't do it. I'm like, no, I'm just going to watch Netflix in bed in my pajamas all day. <laughs> um, but if, if what it is that's on the plate is exciting for me, then, you know, I can go to the gym every day and work out and drink protein shakes and diet. Ugh even though that's insane to me. Um, I can do all that stuff because it's exciting for me. So um, I know what you mean. In the past, I've, uh, you know, if a, if a person is watching a match I'm in, chances are there's probably going to be some shenanigans. There's probably going to be some hijinks, but that's because for me, that's fun. It's also a, a challenge to some degree because I didn't mm -hmm. grow up watching wrestling. A lot of times I encounter wrestling wrestlers who are kind of like stuck in that classic wrestling box and they can't think outside of it at all. True, and yeah. for me, it's like a uh, creative challenge to find a way to think outside of that ring. Um, what can I add to this match that's not what you're expecting to see? And for me, that's fun. That's the challenge. Like, what can I throw in here that someone in the last row of the audience is going to giggle at uh, because they haven't seen that before? And I think that's something to work for and like that's what I'm working for basically that's what I'm going to the gym and dieting for that this little giggle that somebody gives because they weren't expecting to see that in a wrestling match um and like that's what's fun for me to be totally honest like I'm just like it's a guilty pleasure of mine wrestling to get to do these things and when I came back from Japan um obviously like the training and the intense and the intensity and whatnot um there was also a lot of things like for example um I learned uh, a bunch of, if I can just say, really cool, fancy armbar submissions while I was <laughs> over there. Um, but I had to get special permission to learn them. It's a big deal over there. Mm. And the girl, um, they have a, uh, a senpai over there that's a former MMA Japanese women's fighter. Um, oh, wow. And that's what she did for years and years and years. And she came to the dojo specifically to teach me these fancy armbar submissions that she knows uh, that she developed during her MMA career. And I had to get special permission for her to come to the dojo, special permission for her to teach me these skills, and then special permission for me to, in fact, use these skills in America. Um, and it was a big deal. So uh, for me, that's it felt to me at the time like that's a big deal. They're willing to go through all this trouble and go through all this red tape that they have to go to over there just so that I can acquire this new skill. And when I came over there, they were surprised by me for a few reasons. They were surprised at how small I was in person because mm -hmm. I guess on camera I look bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were surprised at um, how long I've been wrestling and how old I am because I look like I'm 12. Um, and then they were surprised by my by my skills because I seem to have many styles um, over there. A person might have one particular set of skills or style. Strong style is the dojo that I, which is ironic that I'm tiny and a high flyer and I ended up in a strong style dojo, but <laughs> right. it awesome. just adds to my repertoire. Um, but they considered me to be a luchadora over there and they don't have any luchadoras in their company. So I'm their only luchadora. So they, they brought in special for me as like kind of a, here you go. We appreciate the hard work you're doing. We want to give you this skill. So it's a huge deal for me um, to even have met this person and to even have gotten to practice and train with them and to acquire one of their skills and have it, it's, you know, it's a gift that they gave me, um, which is super fantastic and an honor for me. So anytime I get to pull that out during a wrestling match, um, it really means something to me. It's all that, um, all the soreness that I had and all the sweat that I had. And anytime I got busted open. I had some dreadlocks pulled out while I was over there during matches and all the hard work I put into every time I do one of those skills and one of those maneuvers is because I, um, I absolutely earned that. So it's a big deal for me. You know what I mean? So it has made my current style more aggressive, but like wrestling is fun for me and I love wrestling and I love to be silly and I love to goof off because that's my real personality. I am silly right. and I do goof off. I just happened to also be a wrestler who's athletic and took martial arts for a long time. 
So it's just like a fun coincidence. Like it's like a perfect storm of stuff there. Um, but yeah, now definitely. We, uh, I was gonna <laughs> say just definitely a really good mix of of of, of the two. Right. And, and nowadays it's like, well, I've been wrestling for 10 years. I've done tours in Japan. You know, I am capable of this other level of wrestling that I think that just for the longest time, I was basically unconcerned that people were not aware of that. Like it didn't mm -hmm. bother me that people were watching me and saying to themselves, oh, that was funny. I've never seen that before. I wonder who this girl is. It doesn't bother me that people don't know, you know, that don't know my whole wrestling career. They, you know, they're not the kind of fans who will buy autographs or things of that nature. It, it doesn't bother me. I don't mind. But at this point in my career, I think that the fans who have been with me all this time for 10 years, um, I feel like they deserve to see uh, the evolution of Jessica and like what I can really do. Like, yes, I can do these things, but basically I've been goofing off and having a ball this whole time. Um, and I feel like now they deserve more. They deserve to see what I'm capable of. They deserve to see that, uh, being a fan of someone for 10 years does mean something and how much I appreciate their support. And I wouldn't still be wrestling if it weren't for them. And um, that they really make all of us, you know, they make our lives. So the only way I could think to give back to that is to really give them something to look at, really give them like a show, like really, really work for them. And if I'm going to get my ass kicked, getting my ass kicked well for you because you're what allows me to travel and be a gypsy and have a ball and have all these adventures. You know what I mean? Definitely. Absolutely. Um, uh, we've been sort of a, uh, a newer sort of regular question that we have on the show. Uh, thanks to a, a good friend of ours, Matt Carlin's, uh, he contributed this, uh, is, is to ask people, uh, what are you watching uh, nowadays when it comes to wrestling? Is there anything that you're particularly into um, that you try to keep a, keep a focus of? Is there anything, even for like maybe like studying purposes, is there anything that uh, you, you've been sort of uh, into nowadays? Uh, that is an interesting question. Um, <laughs> so this is a weird answer. Um, these are two things about me. Uh, one, I don't have TV. That's a reality. <laughs> uh, two, I don't have cable. That's also a reality. I know you're thinking, like, what do you do in your spare time? I don't have a lot of spare time, but when I do have it, I'm watching Netflix. I'm a Netflix junkie. Um, so when I'm watching matches, uh, never do I find myself sitting in front of a screen watching an entire wrestling show unless it's the show I'm at watching. Right. Um, so if I'm watching matches, it's because I'm looking them up on the internet while I'm goofing off at work, trying not to get caught by my boss. <laughs> um, and generally for matches, um, I don't, uh, I mean, I, I'm all about women wrestlers that know what they're doing and they're awesome. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I know a bunch of those women, and I totally support them. Um, but I'm more interested in watching a match that, like, I know that this person is, I respect this person. I know this person, this person is a really good uh, wrestler, and I appreciate what they offer the business, so I'm going to watch this match. So I'll watch matches isolated from each other. Um, I've been watching a lot of ROH matches. I really appreciate those guys. I think they uh, they offer a um, a kind of their own thing, which I appreciate. Anything that's kind of outside the... Uh, what's expected, what everyone thinks they want to see, what has been uh, thrown at us in front of our face. Like, here, you need to watch this. You need to like this. This is what you need to watch. Right. Um, I'm usually immediately turned off by that kind of propaganda. I'm immediately wanting to search for the thing that is not the most popular. I want to see what people don't know anything about because I'm suspicious that there's gold probably there that no one has noticed yet. Um, so I've been watching a lot of the ROH guys. I think they're super talented and they offer kind of a variation. And I really appreciate like uh, they try and involve the audience emotionally. I'm a very emotional person. Um, mm -hmm. When when I have matches, you can see it on my face, which is super humiliating, embarrassing. Later when I see pictures, I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing with my face right there? <laughs> but it's because I was so engrossed in the moment that they caught me on camera. Whatever it was I was thinking at the time, whatever I was feeling, uh, but for me, it's because I'm emotional and my emotions are always right at the surface. So I think the ROH guys do that as well. I think they um, they cater to an audience that wants to be connected to them emotionally. And that's what I appreciate. So if I'm watching wrestling on the Internet, the Internet, which also, by the way, if you've ever tried to contact me fan wise about anything, I'm horrible with technology, the Internet, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, whatever. It's not only my area. So that's why it's hard to get a hold of me. Um, but when it is happening and I am watching, uh, you know, that's who I'm watching. Um, and 
I also am a huge fan of Sarah Del Rey. So anything mm. that she's had going on since she's taken over and since she started doing what she's doing, I'm a huge fan of that. I agree 100% with all of that. Um, I'm a huge fan of hers. And since I didn't grow up watching wrestling, <laughs> mm -hmm. anyone I've become a huge fan of is somebody that I've seen with my own eyes as an educated wrestling adult. And that's or, or, how I've or, become a fan. Or for you as well, that you've gotten to be in the ring with a couple of times as well. So. Right. Right. I've, I've gotten, I've had the uh, pleasure and the honor of being in the ring with some of these women and some of these men myself and, you know, got to see them in, per in, uh, in person and even, in fact, been lucky enough to, like, pick their brain, like, before or after a match about things like that. So I'm definitely, um, I definitely won't complain. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of bumps and bruises. <laughs> 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 but um, totally, so far, at least at this point, completely worth it. Uh, for me, anyways, uh, the good does definitely outweigh the bad. At, there was at some point there, I, I'm not sure at what point I was thinking like, you know, man, if I had known what I was getting myself into, maybe I wouldn't have chosen this path. But um, I survived and stuck in into it long enough that the uh, the goods, at least for me, in my mind, definitely outweigh all the bads. And, you know, like I can take some Tylenol and sweep it off eventually you know, the bumps and bruises and whatnot, but the experiences that I've had and the knowledge I've gained, you know, will last forever. Um, Definitely. And, and we, we actually do have a big question about sort of the best and worst thing about independent wrestling, but I think you honestly kind of answered it, that the sort of the best being, like you mentioned, sort of the travels and the things that have, you know, been, you know, awarded to you for, the, you know, through wrestling, but also just like, I guess the, the, you know, the pain that comes with it, but it, like you mentioned, the, the good definitely outweighing the bad in there. Well, yeah, it's, um, you know, and everybody's story is different. And everybody has a different experience. Um, and you, yeah, you're right. Like I said, um, there were, there were some things that were super difficult for me to learn. And, um, because it's, uh, it's not in my nature. Like there are some things that go on in wrestling, like it goes on in any kind of business where there's, um, you know, people who have their own agenda or people who are not playing by the rules or, you know, whatever, what have you. Nice. Um, and I'm not a person to even think or conceive of those things. So a lot of times it'll be happening around me and I won't even notice it's happening, um, which ultimately affects me and affects the show I'm working on. And, uh, and I think when it comes down to it, it affects what the fans are getting. Like we're all here doing what we love because the fans keep coming back. And if we're not giving them our best because of some, stupid whatever going on in the locker room then to me that's insane and ridiculous but it happens you know depending on where you're working and various locker rooms but um and i know it's a cliche but i'm gonna say it time does do all things so time heals all wounds mm -hmm. and time um allows us to uh learn from a position that we could not see before and i've just been doing it long enough that now that i'm where i'm standing it is way easier for me to accept the things I cannot change and to um, work to change the things I think that I can't and to be, to feel good about it and to feel like that there are enough other people in wrestling that I've met and I've become friends with and very close with that feel the same way I do together. We can do these things um, and we can make it what we want to make it instead of just being uh, stuck in the situation that you feel like you're stuck in. It's all, it's all a, a peace of mind. It's all your, your mentality. It's all your attitude. You know, um, you could train anyone to be an athlete, uh, but the heart and the emotion and the love and all that, that can't be taught. That's got, that's gotta be something that comes from within you. And there's definitely enough people in wrestling who have that, um, for us to make it, you know, what we want to make it for the fans and for all of us to, you know, be happy and all together. I know that sounds super hippie, whatever. <laughs> no, but no, that's awesome. And I, I definitely uh, wholeheartedly agree with that, uh, that mentality. Um, uh, well, thank you very much, Jessica, for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on. Um, if people want to follow you on uh, social media, I know you mentioned for, uh, beforehand, uh, uh, not as active, but if they, if they have, you know, any places to find you or if you're on any upcoming events uh, that people uh, can check you out on, please feel free to plug away. Um, I just, maybe you can tell everyone because <laughs> I don't know. I would have to, I would have to literally open my up on my phone. I didn't even set up my own Twitter account on my phone. Somebody else did it for me. And if I had to find it on a computer, I wouldn't even know how to do that. That's how okay. ridiculous I am. And you know what's even more messed up about this? Just a little like background information. My dad's a computer engineer. My brother is a professional online gamer and I didn't inherit any of that. Oh wow. None. <laughs> like they got all of that. So somebody had to be 
Lucifer in the negative, and that's me, fellas. That's me. So I have a tweeter, but it's like uh, Rajet underscore something. Oh, I don't know what uh, it is. Uh, JJ underscore Ray, uh, Ray, <laughs> Ray Jet, yes. Uh, go yeah, Ray Jet's not even a word, so like it's difficult. And I have an Instagram <laughs> and I have a Facebook, but and I see, you know, I don't know any of that information. I know that um, next weekend I will be wrestling somebody. I don't know what at ACW. I don't know what. And then the weekend after that, I'm wrestling in, uh, in my area at IHWE. I also don't know who I'm wrestling or what that match is about. Um, I won't know where I'm going or who I'm wrestling until I get there. I just blindly follow my navigator and I show up and I'm like, what did you want me to do? <laughs> oh, I'm wrestling these guys. Cool. And, and that's how I, uh, that's how I make my living. That's all that I, I'm just show up. I have no idea. Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, but any, anytime, uh, anyone listening to the show, uh, sees Jessica James on the card, I would encourage you to, uh, go check it out because you will uh, thoroughly be entertained if I can say so myself. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank you again, Jessica. And and uh, we're going to go in and, and me and Sylvia are going to talk about some of the happenings uh, that are going on in the independent wrestling world. That's right, Eamon. And of course, uh, I think you have the most wrestling going on with Inspire Pro this weekend. I know you were just jonesing for it after that hiatus. Uh, so how'd that go? It went really well. Uh, uh, our undeniable... Un- that's a word to say. Undeniable event was this past weekend uh, it, on uh, Sunday. Um, very fun show. I, I was very happy with how it all uh, turned out. Uh, great attendance again. Um, uh, I think we did some really cool stuff this time around. Uh, this was a big show for us. We had a lot of uh, fly-in and, and people from out of town coming in, sort of guests uh, that were wrestling for us, all which were super awesome and, and amazingly talented. Uh, sadly, uh uh, the only one that we couldn't uh, get to actually attend the show was Takaki Wanabe because of the blizzards that are going on in New Jersey. Oh, jeez, yes. Yeah, his uh, flight sadly got canceled, uh, so we had to uh, work with that. We did luckily get Mr. Touchdown, uh, even though his flight was delayed three hours. Uh, so the blizzards in, in the Northeast could not hold back the awesome wrestling that's going on in Texas. So, hmm. uh, But it was he was great, uh, really cool to work with. Uh, luckily, he came in uh, uh, pretty much like as the show started. Uh, uh, but uh, it was good to you know see him. You know he had an amazing match with a friend of the show, Steve Marino. Um, really, really fun stuff. Uh, and like I said, we had a lot of great talents that came in for that show um, uh, from out of town. Uh, our women's show. It was a uh, we had a lot of women's matches on the card. That had a lot of guests, and they were all awesome. Um, uh, Jessica James, uh, who we just had on, wrestled Vanessa Craven from Canada, who is amazing and awesome. And I'm rocking her new T-shirt, by the way. Um, she was really cool. Uh, Angelus Lane from the St. Louis area came down. She was awesome. Uh, Nicole Savoy from California wrestled Athena in an amazing match. Um, there was a lot of cool people on the show. Uh, we've had, uh, as seen yesterday on WWE Raw, Leva Bates, a.k.a. Blue Pants, a.k.a. Barry in the uh, uh, Rosebuds, um, uh, was there wrestling Barbie Hayden. Great match as always. Um, and a killer uh, six-man tag that main evented between uh, – uh, lots of friends of the shows, uh, Andy Dalton, Davey Vega, and Tim Storm against Ray Rowe, uh, who was making his first appearance in Inspire Pro after his motorcycle accident, uh, Matthew Palmer, and Franco D'Angelo. Uh, I shared a, a Vine on our uh, uh, Rusty Mayhem Show Facebook group of one of the craziest things I've ever seen happen ever uh, in a wrestling match. Uh, it was very scary and Luckily, everyone involved in it was okay, which is shocking. Um, but, yeah, it was cool. It was really, really fun stuff. And I'm excited for when the DVD uh, comes out for that event. Uh, we're busting out some cool stuff. Uh, uh, we just released Battle Wars not too long ago on SmartMark Video uh, that you can go check out. Ecstasy of Gold 2 uh, will be soon coming. Uh, and, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff happening for Inspire Pro. We return on March 22nd, uh, which should be very fun. Uh, definitely very should be a very interesting event since uh, South by Southwest is going uh, down in Austin uh, okay. around that time. So it will be interesting. Um, I, I think it'll, I think it'll be successful though. I, I'm really, you know, happy with the momentum that we've built uh, as of late uh, with these shows and, and I'm excited for what's to come for Inspire Pro. Um, but yeah, very cool stuff coming down awesome. uh, in the Austin, Texas area. Awesome. Good stuff. And a lot of stuff coming up, of course. Um, here in the Pittsburgh area, we got a couple of things going down. Uh, um, well, I, I just picked that up from you, didn't I? 
Um, <laughs> not somebody that you can, we, you know, I like to experience, put people out there that you can experience online by DVD, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and this is not one of them, but they were made famous. We've talked about them in recent months, uh, being featured in the wall street journal of all places, including friend of the show, Keith hot, uh, as part uh, as the jet is jester character that he does there. But KSWA, I know fantastic website, uh, Keystone state wrestling Alliance having a 15th anniversary event, uh, in Pittsburgh, at Teamsters Temple, oh, man, if oh yeah, I have RWA that weekend. That's right. I, I'm, I keep going like, oh yeah, I should check out this show. Then I'm like, no, no, I'm at a show because I'll be <laughs> at RWALive.com if uh, you can get out of the Pittsburgh area. Uh, they're having the uh, uh, their RWA Fury event for this year, and I mentioned this on the Wrestling Man Show. Uh, Nick Esteban versus Mickey Knuckles in a Falls Count hey. Andrew Anywhere intergender match. Uh, Generation Dead will be there. Uh, Jesse Bell will be on hand. Uh, according to this, uh, 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 Sanjay Dutt. We were talking about promos, and this was dropped. I think it was the one we was talking about in the chat room. Sanjay Dutt, 53 second de- uh, uh, Bro. promo. That's it. It's like, I'm there. I'm going to kick somebody's ass. I'm going to get my belt back. See you. February Fury or whatever, you know? I mean, that that's the way you do it, you know? Yep. And, and, and it's to the point. And, um, and, and, that's what you need to do, you know, and that's a guy <laughs> that, uh, you know, obviously just at tapings for TNA, you know, has been around for a bit, knows what he's doing. So go check that out. And we'll, of course, have that uh, digital DVD uh, in the next week on uh, pro wrestling dot com. No, Pittsburgh wrestling dot com. I wish I had pro wrestling dot com. Holy crap. That would be really nice. Man. Some lucky, some lucky fool has that right now. And it's never. No. Given we got Pittsburgh wrestling dot com. We got indie wrestling dot us dot us. Yeah. Badass. Badass. They all go to the same place, but if you want to go check any of that out. Um, also, uh, you know, okay, so we get these emails from uh, Nate Stein. Um, this just giant, incredible list. Incredible list of <laughs> uh, indies. Like, I don't even know how the ones that were involved in got on this list sometimes, right? And I thought, like, kind of poke around on it. You know, uh, it's hard to be like, oh, let's go through here and find some good stuff. Um but I'm just like, I just kind of wanted to click through until I find things that at least have like YouTube and or DVDs or something going on um, to no, we're not going to do that one. I'm still poking around at a couple to find a couple good ones to mention real quick. Uh, this was interesting. So, uh, again, over on the Facebook page, this is British Championship Wrestling. I wonder where they're at. It'd be great if they're just in New Jersey, right? Yeah. Um, but they got uh, the, the, the former New Jersey, the former, <laughs> the former um, um, Drew McIntyre. It looks like on this card, uh, as well as uh, Grado, 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 Grado. I was corrected by somebody that is uh, Scottish, who so. is teaming up <laughs> with Angelina Love. Uh, a, a night of family friendly wrestling with BCW coming up here. Uh, apparently, uh, wait, wait, April 4th, Davey Rich is going to be there. Um, and I think what I, it said this weekend, but I'm not seeing a poster for a show this weekend. I'm very huh. confused. Oh, February 20th. Um, and actually none of those people are on this one. Uh, hey, on the fly, trying to give somebody different, a little bit of, uh, something but go check them out british championship wrestling if you're on facebook you can find out what's going on there you know it's funny i saw i saw grotto real quick when i was looking at this i thought it was Colt cabana so i snapped they kind of look very similar hmm. it's the headband it's the headband um also coming up uh here's another random one here's a random wrestling check-in alpha hyphen numeral one wrestling.com um they got a cool look over here actually six i actually six he's a guy man i i wish he was in iwc more so i have some more talks with him uh alpha but see- one was actually uh, one of the companies i was involved in raw alternative uh nice uh, so- they provided uh, Josh Alexander versus Ricochet, based out of Canada. Uh, they look like they're producing some really cool stuff. Some great looking stuff. They Ricky Shane Page, I'm familiar with in this area, is their zero zero gravity champion. Their tag champs or tag team champs are somebody called the Gym Rats. Um, <laughs> this team coming out is called the Oppression. I think, okay. I think that's our nation of domination that we've always wanted. Five man ladder match I'm seeing on their next show uh, coming up here this weekend, February 22nd in Hamilton, Ontario. Ontario. Okay. Oh, this is the 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 Matt Rats DVD teaser we were talking about 
yes. several months ago. That's right. Uh, so go check them out. They got some cool stuff. A lot of stuff on YouTube as well. Um, at alpha hyphen numeral one wrestling.com. Those guys have the, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know you're trying to get like, who has the not hyphen wrestling one.com. Right. Uh, right. let's see. Let's see. Oh, this, nobody has it. Nobody has it. Um, and then I found a couple other ones that I would not recommend anybody by just looking at them. Um, there, but- there are a couple other ones that are happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, AIW has a show. Um, their I two two choose you event, which is they they did it the weekend before Valentine's Day. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Better, but um, they've got a lot of cool stuff on that show. Um, uh, Six man tag featuring uh, the first match with Ray Rowe in AIW in about seven years, mm-hmm. uh, which is really cool. And he'll be teaming with Ethan Carter the Third and DJ Z as part of Dudes on TV uh, to take on Johnny Gargano, Josh Prohibition, and Alex Daniels, who's one of Johnny Gargano's students. Um, they've got a lot of stacked stuff on that show. Uh, it looks like a really fun one. Uh, they just got also a new venue recently. Uh, they moved out of uh, Turner's Hall. Uh, and it looks like they're producing some really cool stuff as of late. So go check nice. them out at AIWrestling.com. Uh, also, uh, CZW and WSU have a dub- double header this weekend. Uh, both of them are their anniversary events uh, for both companies. And it will be held at the ECW Arena, actually. So this is a, a big event for them. Uh, CZW's 16th event and WSU's anniversary. Uh, the WSU one looks very interesting, headlined by a TLC match between uh, Athena and Hanaya. This is the uh, third of their series of matches. Uh, and not many places where you'll see a female TLC match and also a female TLC match in the ECW arena. Um, so that should be very interesting. And both of those events are also on high pay-per-view. Um, more information at ccwrestling.com. So definitely go check them out as well. And, and those are some of the big ones, but like I said, there's tons of any uh, indie wrestling events everywhere. So uh, just look it check up. out look whatever's it up. in your area. I just saw they have a a six disc set of every main event from Cage of Death one through fifteen. Wow. You got me on the <laughs> name, man. You got me on the name. Anybody I know in this? No, no. Anybody, there may be some recognizable faces. Anybody? Oh, Sammy Callahan. I'm seeing in Cage of Death eleven. Matt Tremont, actually, friend of the show, against mm-hmm. uh, DJ Hyde, who I've seen uh, at IWC a few times. Um, hey, did you? Oh, we should mention this briefly. Uh, WWE.com actually had a really good article on yes. the former Drake Younger, current referee you see a lot on NXT, made a cameo, of course, uh, this week on Raw since they were in Orlando. Um, I have a... a, a personal i can't say a personal connection but a personal at least internal like oh that's nice um uh he was on the first show that i got to shoot ringside for nice way back in 2007 i'm i'm guessing um this, it was that big tournament right during, the big uh, two-day tournament they had during the steel city con mm-hmm. um he was part of the tournament the official title of the show ready for this promotional consideration paid for by the following <laughs> with the weirdest freaking name I've ever seen on an indie show um, and that's the one where Shima Zion won his first I think major title definitely so, yeah the now yeah. Zima Ion DJZ that we had a few weeks here on this show um, so no really cool and they actually got into like his CZW deathmatch style and style, history yeah. and everything and there, there was also some video interviews that uh, they put alongside of it where he talks about like his friendship with dean ambrose and mm-hmm. and and you know going you know up and down the road with him and stuff like that I, uh, and it's cool that they put a profile on a referee and and it's also a referee that you know did that style that drake younger did mm-hmm. um for, for the longest time uh, that was really cool also drake is if you ask anyone in wrestling that's wrestled or known him like drake's probably like the nicest person around so mm-hmm. it's a, it's like the perfect like like you know, that, like I haven't seen like a casual picture of Jake, Drake Younger where he's not like smiling ear to ear. Like, like he he's a, he's a really cool dude from everything I've heard, and and uh, yeah, it was cool to see him get profiled on uh, WWE.com. Certainly, certainly, good stuff, good stuff, all around. Hey, and WWE.com has been really good lately about featuring like you know we've seen it, even DVD documentaries like like uh, footage from Ring of Honor, you know. Um, right, that's true. I, and and I hope I hope that's to the point. You know, I would love to see like WWE kind of like I guess they have their own developmental, so they don't really need to. But even kind of be like, hey, Ring of Honor, nudge, nudge, like they did with ECW back in the day. 
you know? That's true. Kind of like yeah. a prop up thing. It was like, hey, we like the guys you're spitting out here. You know, they're making our WWE network look good over here. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> um, But geez, I even, you know, I, I know it's a long, long, I would love to see, oh, we'll get into other stuff, but I'd love to see them like just cut some kind of deal with Ring of Honor and just like pull that stuff on the network, you know, just as like an affiliate or something, you know, um, just be like, hey, come here for wrestling, period. Um, right. I think that'd be a great service to to wrestling and fans in, in the long run, you know. But that's just me. That's that's really, really, really wishful thinking. Or maybe <laughs> in the long run, please buy Ring of Honor WWE. <laughs> you know what? Just buy everybody. Just WWE can be the Disney of professional wrestling, where they buy the cool stuff and let the cool stuff just happen and and finance it. Totally. You know, could be, could be. I think it's enough indie wrestling for this week, sir. I think it, I think so. I, I, I'm full. I'm I think we're tapped. I'm we're tapped. I'm 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 worn out on the indie wrestling. Such great. Uh, thank you, Jessica James. A fantastic interview this week. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. I I, I, I was telling her off air like I like some of the stuff about uh, Japan and, and how they're training over there and the styles and and, and, and like I loved hearing that because I especially with as much as we're getting into like the Japanese wrestling these days. Um, yeah. with New Japan and, and our friend. I'm actually going to bug our one friend who is not really big on the indies until recently with New Japan and Lucha Underground uh, to check out that interview and hear a little bit about that. And maybe we'll get into that. But On that note, Eamon, he's at Eamon too, please. InspireProWrestling.com is all the stuff they're doing down there. Uh, for me, SorgatronMedia.com, PittsburghWrestling.com to check out any wrestling and other not wrestling related stuff. Uh, I'm doing a daily thing, May- Mayhem Minute, where I'll take a news or conversation topic and uh, take a couple minutes on it and let you guys uh, duke it out in the YouTube comments and social media. Um, and have some fun with that. Uh, we're, we're, we're picking out some topics that we don't like get deep into or have a chance to on some of the other shows for whatever reason um and and get to do something a little bit different there and so much other stuff going on on the network the wrap-ups and 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 so much more wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all that kind of stuff drop us a line of course as usual to 412-206-WMS0 for the voicemail hotline and good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com let us know who you think we should have on what promotions should we be talking about etc etc there's questions to talk about yeah it was, it was questions like well, that, that great question i think uh matt carlin's you know mm-hmm. um I, I, I wanted to it, jessica doesn't have to feel bad about not having a tv i mean well, i have a yeah. tv i was gonna say there's a lot of people that i'm like yeah, can we, i don't think either of us have cable right i mean I, I, I have cable but my cable is paid for by a university <laughs> yeah you got university cable let's be honest you would yeah. not regularly have cable. well i invertedly pay for it by paying for this room that's but. right that's right. Um, hey, so it looks like that I'm stuck on your shot because of whatever reason that's going on with Wirecast. So why don't you take us out of here, Eamon? You can find uh, – I, I can't remember if it's there's not. 412-226-WMS0-GoodTimesAreResteamMayhemShow.com. Subscribe uh, on, on various platforms that you can uh, find us on. Uh, and go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for more – Heck, if it's on me, I'll do the. Oh no, it's on Sorg. It, it, it unfroze. It unfroze. But go ahead, you're doing a good job. And ladies and gentlemen, go out there and support some independent wrestling. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and see. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see it from the back down. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.